All right, morning everyone. It's been absolutely ages since I've done a video, ages since I've been able to get out of shooting. Um, I've been shooting a few times lately with a couple of friends and I've not particularly been over the, over the moon with my shooting. So today I've got a fair, fair few hours. So I thought I'd come down, bring the catch box out. I brought the catch box out more for your benefit than mine. Um, I never really shoot into a catch box, but it's, it's just so that you can see that I'm hitting something or where my shots are going. So it's more like you've got more of a visual reference than I have. So I thought I'd come out, have a bit of a practice, um, make a little bit of a video out of it, try and see where I'm going wrong. Uh, my shots have been striking slightly high, so it could be a few things. It could be I'm not getting my tip over on my frame enough. It could be that my anchor point's changed slightly. It could also be that my elbow position is getting a little bit high and I'm bumping the ball slightly. So I'm going to have a few shots. That set up to where I'm stood is 18 metres, to where the camera is is 20 metres. I'll pace it out so you know. Uh, it's an 80 mil target, so you know we're not we're not looking to destroy ourselves with a 40 mil target at 18 meters. It's just senseless. I shoot a heavy setup, uh, an 11 mil setup. I'm actually so shooting a 2517, not a 2520 of one millimeter. I'm a goblet Evo, Evo Field Pro, 11 millimeter ball. So like I say an 80 mil target at 20, well 18 meters where we're shooting from is uh, is more than enough to be practicing on. So I'll, I'll paste that out now so you can see. Eighteen to there, so there you go, more probably nineteen and a half for the camera. Right, let's just have a few shots. I mean, like I say, eighty mil isn't a, isn't a tiny target, but at, you know, at eighteen meters, if you can put a eleven mil still within an eighty mil within an eighty mil circle, you can kill him what you're aiming at. First time lucky. There you go, slightly high. Now I have to watch back on my video whether my elbow raised slightly. I've got a feeling that my elbow came up a touch, which is what's setting that shot slightly high. So when I'm practicing, these are all little things I'm looking at. I'm not just firing balls down range. I'm paying attention to everything that I'm doing. I'm trying to keep my hand as steady as I can. Obviously, nerves do kick in a bit, even when you're doing a film like this, you know. It's, um, you still, obviously, you want to shoot well. But you need to be paying attention to everything that you're doing. So like I say, my elbow position, release, pouch release, hand hold, just absolutely everything. I'm not just throwing steel balls down, like, down range, hoping to get better. Side of it. So you must be able to see that. that is hanging side on now. Let's zoom that in. See if I can get a shot on it side on. Let's see if we can ping it side on. Spin it back around. Oh. <laughs> you might be able to see the ball literally just skim past the side. Right, let's zoom it back out. Right, so I mean, realistically, there's not a great deal wrong. I think, um, I think mainly, if you're just being out of practice, the ball striking high thing, I think, is probably my elbow position, but like I have to watch that back on the video. There you go, another shot, slightly high, slightly left too. Totally right. So all these little things, the amount, or even muscle memory, the sort of even the amount, what changes the line as well is, is the amount you pronate the hand. So this angle will change the line of where the ball strikes. That's all these things. When you're out of practice, your muscle memory goes. Um, so you know, it really is important to keep up on it if you want to be at the sort of top level. I say top level. Um, if you want to be shooting well. Oh, 
Oh, way high. Way high. Now I have to watch that back again. High again. See, now is my elbow creeping up? Is my elbow creeping up? Or is it my anchor point creeping down? Dead centre. See how much needed to come out and do a practice. <laughs> Have a few more shots. Move it off to the side. to get to a place where the muscle memory takes over from the conscious thinking. Does that make sense? Just getting back to the fact of trusting yourself. And when you haven't shot for a while, you get like, you do get rusty. And you stop trusting yourself. So 18 metres, um, not the best of shooting at all, but it just shows me what, I've, what I need to work on really. And that's paying attention to my elbow position. I think my release is fine, I feel my uh, frame hold is fine. Maybe I just need to get the wrist dial back in a little bit, but hopefully I'm not, I'm not a million miles out. I think we have one that went way high, which I'm looking forward to watching back and seeing really. I said I was going to give up, didn't I? The trouble with this sport is damn addictive. That's it. Right, let's move the catch box around and uh, try to shoot at a different angle, I think. Okay, I've got the catch box set up down there now. That's at around 25 meters. We've still got the 80 mil target. Um, just gonna have a look, a few shots, just see, we'll see if we can show you, and uh, obviously practice the little things that change when shooting at different angles. Obviously I'm trying to match my elbow to the position of the target. Uh, so when you're shooting up or down, obviously your elbow position shouldn't stay the same like this. Your elbow position in your body will follow where the target's going. So. Okay, it's about 25 metres, still got the 80mm target on there. Uh, so yeah, it's not, a, not an easy shot by any means. This isn't the sort of thing you should be going, yeah, I can bang that every time. Um, because realistically, in this kind of scenario, it isn't. Low. First time I draw on the money. It's a funny angle too, I should have set the angle a bit better. Right on the money. Yeah, right on the money there. Please with that. Um, we'll have another shot quick. I don't want to flog it to death. Start, start missing and uh, it becomes counterproductive. So I mean, if that was an animal, you just killed it, was it three or four out of five, something like that? I can't remember. I think, I think I've missed one, I think. 
got a little bit high. So if it wasn't animal, we'd miss that one over the top. But at least it's flying off uninjured. <laughs> You'll probably get people out there that will retake and retake and retake videos till they get themselves shooting five or ten on a row of an 80 mil or something, but it's just not realistic all the time. You know, if you're doing shooting like this, missing one here and there, which you're going to, um, it's, especially with a setup like this, yeah, you, you're doing more than enough. There you go. There I do. I'll have a look around see if I can find somewhere where I can put it higher, but I'm not holding out much hope because I haven't got a ladder. Um, yeah, very pleased with that. So like I say, I'll have a look around and see if I can put it a little bit higher somewhere or we'll change the angle slightly oh, slip. well there you go up here for thinking rather than putting the target up in the tree we'll come down to the bottom and put the target up the top makes sense um where we've got the target sat there it's about we're back to about 20 meters uh still got the 80 mil target uh looking like a perfectly set up rabbit i think um so we have a few shots of that and uh, hopefully cover all the little things I've been thinking about while I've been shooting. Hopefully you've made it to this point. Oh, it's 11 minutes still here. Oh, where's that? Must have dropped one. It's funny, isn't it? These, I'll fire them off like nobody's business. Don't care. Fire them, fire them, fire them. If I drop one, I'll search like mad till I find it. Right, anyway, I digress. Let's uh, cover what, we've, what I've been thinking about while I've been shooting. And uh, try and get a few shots on this rabbit. Right, so each time, obviously, as I said before, I'm thinking about elbow position. I'm thinking about my hand, let's call it pronation, the amount I'm pushing it forward. I mean, my hand, it sh I shoot naturally where my hand sits anyway. But when you get rusty, you sort of, you always second guess yourself. Um, so it's keeping yourself topped up with practice is, is essential, really, if you, if you want to be shooting well. Um, so I'm thinking about my anchor position as well, always my anchor position, my rotation. Also, one thing I've never mentioned before, I've mentioned pouch hold, but also where your pouch sits in your finger. So, you know, you want to find, you want to have a specific spot on your finger where your pouch sits. So obviously if you're changing where your pouch sits here, you're effectively changing the angle of your shot. So it's all these little things to, to re-familiarise yourself with. Ooh, high. Now I've got a feeling there, when I watch that back, my elbow was high. Which will cause a slight little bump in the ball and send it high. Try again. So I can watch that back. There's the one. Bloody typical. Hang on. It's all these little things you want to kind of re-familiarise yourself with when you, or even when you're out practicing or when you're learning. It's all these little things to think about. Oh, a dead rabbit. I think when you watch this back, or when you watch this, you'll notice that my elbow is in a slightly lower position than the first two I missed. at the bottom of it. One more. 
There we go. All right, um, I'm going to kick around here for a little while longer, a bit more practice, but uh, yeah, it's nice to get out, have a few shots, a bit of practice, a few misses, uh, cover a few things. Just make a video again, really. Hopefully, you'll now get stuck in back into the swing of things now uh, with lockdown and COVID and stuff, and God knows what things we get over with, thank God. Uh, yeah, hopefully, you've enjoyed watching it, and I hope we do something again soon. Cheers.